Hey, it's been a while since I did a terrarium update. A while meaning probably like a week. <laughs> uh, but I figured I'd do one. Things are still mostly pretty good. Still got that aerial root developing on the pothos. Oh, look how long it is now. Oh, that's amazing. I just put up this new leaf here. Um, and then the one that's down here is putting out a new leaf as well. So that's really exciting. It's, it's so nice to see that it's thriving <laughs> instead of dying like it was before. You'll see that the bromeliad is in rough shape. Again, it's just this natural downwards trajectory. However, I have seen that it's got two pups developing. See, there's there's one up there. Then it's hard to find the other. So whatever, there's one on the other side there. But um, I think you're supposed to remove those when they're about a third of the size of the parent. Um, but once the, once they're big enough, like, I'm just going to totally take out the bromeliad, maybe put the pups in tree fern fiber, or see if there's somewhere else I can tuck them away. Um, but the point is, like, I kind of want to use that space. Now, I did recently plant a tiny little nerve plant back there. Can you see it? Wait, where is she? What the heck? Okay. Oh, there. There, yeah, very tiny. Tiny little nerve plant for my sister. I think it was like a baby coming off of one of her nerve plants. Um, so I kind of wanted that to cover some of the back of the tank, but the actual place where I planted this, I'm kind of thinking of putting something else in there. I can put, actually I have two of my choices. I've, um, could put in Radifora, 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 I feel like I know how to say it, but whatever, Tetrasperma, um, I have like a smaller one I could put in, and I also have Monstera atisonii that I think would look really cool too. Both of these actually like a lot of light, um, for, like in terms of like a bright and direct light kind of tropical houseplant. These two both actually like a little bit more light, so I feel like terrarium would be nice for them. And both of them are kind of vining plants, so putting them here will be great for letting them grow all over the place. Another thing I was thinking is putting a calathea there, because I do have some calatheas that could fit, like some nice smaller ones. I just love calatheas, and putting them in somewhere more humid, like the terrarium, I feel would help them thrive. It's hard to get in here, but this Calathea, it's got some crispy edges from when I was working things out in the beginning, but, oh, it's hard to see. There's some new growth popping up, is what I'm trying to find to show you. Where is it? There it is, okay. Up here. Got a little weird thing coming up. That that thing. That's that's some new growth. So that's very cool to me. I like that it's doing well enough for that. But yeah, I do have some calatheas that I could like separate and put in the tank. So like I have this beauty star here. Um it was like this when I it so I'm just trying to help it recover <laughs> but like I could divide it and put some of it in there or this white fusion which again I think they're supposed to be pretty finicky but you know there's some these smaller leaves here this whole section on this side I think could really work um orbifolia I don't think I'll put in there just because it's I just want to keep it out here special but Anyways, I might put that up there too. Another option is that I do have like a big hollow cork stump um, that can be used as a planter. And so then I could just fill that with soil, put something in there, and then stick that in the back corner. That would mean kind of moving some stuff around, but I'm okay with that. I'm also like not totally into having the snake plant here so much anymore. I, I think they're green and all. And I like that they're sturdy, so that's good for the gecko, but... I kind of want more like lush greenness and I don't know what the snake plant fits in with that. 
but we'll see. We'll see. I'm also worried about like it being a little too pointy for uh, jumping around, but maybe I'm just being paranoid at that point. Okay, um, another plant related update. There's two creeping figs that were at the top and not doing well. I've moved them. One of them I barely moved. I just kind of put so that it's planted at the front of this planter instead of the back. So the front it hopefully will be getting more water um, because I think the problem was that it was drying out too much. So here it is. I'm going to try to get it to climb up this wall again, but we'll see. I'll see if that works. Um, the other one I put down here, down there. In addition, I found this great little variegated creeping fig and I decided to put this in here too. Just, I don't know, it looks, looks so cool. Although maybe it's a little too busy actually. That's kind of what I like about the idea of putting either the Radififora or the Monstera Addisonii up here, is that it'll be something that's just green, just green and cool. Because I have so many like beautiful variegated or bright plants and like maybe I should chill out on that at some point. I don't know. Anyways, so here, this, I have um, a little metal clip here just kind of guiding it up. I'm hoping it'll figure that out. Um, and then I have another one here helping it move up. I put another one then in the back with, again, a clip there. Goes in there. A clip there just to kind of keep it in place because I'd love it to cover that cork on the side. I'm trying to be mindful of the posts I saw on Dendroboard, this one um, dart frog forum that's super useful for vivarium info. Uh, somebody mentioned that they don't like to put creeping fig in their vivariums just because it takes over too much. And right now, as I really just want things to grow in, I'm like, okay, sure, but I don't know. I would rather not have it just totally take over and choke out the other plants. That's the thing. So I don't know. I'll keep I'll keep an eye out for that and uh, be prepared to rip things out if necessary. Man, I'm so happy about this golden pothos. <laughs> One consequence, I think, of me covering up um, the back half of the light is that this golden pothos is showing very little variegation. Like it's not really getting a lot of that yellow, and the parts that are are closer to the light. So. I think now that I've figured out my watering issue, I might stop blocking that light on the top. It might be overkill at this point, but um, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, let's see what other updates. I mean, not really too much. Things just seem to be okay. This umbrella plant has this like new little leaf that's kind of continued to grow. So that's gonna be cool. Um, I'm gonna try to figure out there we go, focus. Um, so the thing I still need to figure out are like branches going across and around. So I do have a 12 inch, 12 or 16 inch um, cork branch in the gecko's current tank in a different room um, that I won't be taking out until he moves out because I don't, he likes it, I'm gonna keep it there. Um, but that's something I can put in somewhere. I'm thinking like maybe just like up here or something, somewhere that feels natural. Um, and then I did get a bunch of other cork branches, but I think they're all like too big or too thick in a way that just doesn't seem like it makes sense. So I don't know, I do have this like Galapagos mossy vine and it's something like 12 feet, which feels insane. So if I can safely cut it and not have like exposed wire, I might, but maybe I shouldn't. I don't know. I'll see if I can put some vines around. Like if I fold it in half and kind of twist it, it'll make it thicker, easier for the gecko to walk on, shorter, so it'll be easier to kind of just put some vines all over the place. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Work in progress, I guess. Um, any other updates? I guess I need to clip off this one struggling leaf of the bromeliad bloom, but that's okay. I'll, I'll do that. Um, yeah, I've got that nerve plant there. Um, 
My sister also gave me a little pepper spot pepperoni, I think, that I accidentally broke when I was trying to put it in. So I have that propagating now so I can kind of grow it back and put that in. Um, it should be good. And um, yeah, I just kind of need things to settle in. I'm kind of worried about the timeline now because if I'm going to be replanting something in the place of the bromeliad, then that needs time to settle in too. So maybe I should actually take this out sooner than later so I can get something else new in and let that kind of do its thing. So, I don't know. Um, in terms of like cleanup crew, they seem to be doing pretty well in here. I do um, sometimes see the orange powder blues crawling around, so that's kind of fun. Um, oh, sweet. Okay, I just poked it. So I left this little piece of cucumber out for them yesterday. And you can see a little, there's a little springtail crawling around. Must have been eating it. I know I probably don't have to specifically leave out like springtail isopod food right now. I'm not going to be able to grab it with a skewer. Okay, I'll use something else. Oh, okay, that's kind of gross. Anyways, um... Yeah, okay, that's a nice novelty. Got to see a little springtail walking around. So yeah, those seem to be doing okay. The colony of springtails and the colony of orange powder blues I have doing their own thing are also thriving. I think I have a lot of little baby isopods, so maybe eventually I'll have to like sell them on Facebook or something. Um, check out this. I love this little, little root kind of stabilizing this guy. Although... I mean, because I can, like, lift it out of the planter and stuff, I'm worried that I'm just going to disturb it too much, but... Okay. That's the, the update for for this week. Hopefully next time I check in, I've done something with the vermilion and put something else in. That'll look good.